am i audible to all of you anyone can reply it would be uh, good or show off and also can do am i audible हेलो 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 सबको आवाज आ रही है प्लीज जिसको आ रही है आप ना हाथ थोड़ा ऊपर कर लीजिए आ रही है क्लियर हाँ ठीक है आ रही आ रही आवाज आ रही है ओके let's start the seminar series uh, myself dr nishan kn i am an assistant professor in imans uh, we will be starting the session uh, today's session is about uh, communication skills art of interviewing this uh, i guess will uh, dr rakesh will take over audible yes sir audible yes sir rafan everybody Uh, I hope uh, everybody can uh, hear distinct my voices. So I'll go ahead with my presentation today. Um, with, uh, the introduction that I've got. So I'm a senior resident uh, in the Department of Psychiatry. I uh, have done my MD from the Nuns. Currently working as a senior resident in the Department of Psychiatry. So uh, today's presentation on communication skills. So I like to start with the quote that has been a very famous uh, about clinical interview. So clinical interview is virtually an indispensable uh, tool for the physician-patient interaction. Well-constructed interview truly may be regarded as the most powerful, sensitive, and versatile instrument available to the physician. This quote was given by uh, George Lipman Angel, an American internist and uh, psychiatrist. He was best known for his formulation for the bio psychosocial model uh, a general theory on the illness of uh, for illness and healing so with this uh, quote i would like to summarize uh, what would be the uh, proceedings of today's presentation so it would be first what is communication what are its types and what type we are going to uh, uh, specifically discuss today the terms definitions and examples that you need to know before we go ahead to the core presentation how important communication skill is for a clinician and ways of communication uh, the process of interview and the factors that influence the uh, rapport building which on which the whole presentation is being built up barriers for effective communication and what are the do's and don'ts followed by summary and clarifications we might stop in between for uh, clarifications as well and we can take up questions and uh, for the discussions so what is communication yeah as we all know it's a dynamic process which involves uh, convey a thought or a feeling how it is uh, received depends upon the set of events stimuli that the receiver is exposed to and how you say and what you say plays an important role in communication so types what we usually have broadly uh, we can put it as verbal of which you can put it as oral and written in oral you have speaking and listening and written you have writing and reading whereas non verbal you have facial expressions gestures body languages proximity that you maintain with the person touch personal appearance and silence so all these things we will be discussing mostly about the oral uh, aspect of it and the non verbal aspect of communication so before going into the core uh, features we will be discussing few of these uh, terms on and off so it is better that all of us are in the same page so what do you think by rapo rapo is nothing but an harmonious responsiveness between the doctor and the patient the patient should understand that the doctor is trustworthy and he can he will be able to share all the information with the doctor and the doctor also feels the same way that yes the patient is confident in me and i can go ahead in uh, giving my recommendations to the patient empathy it is the capacity to appreciate and understand the experience of the patient which is usually achieved when the doctor imagines himself in the patient's position but warning is that but maintain objectivity at the same time so if you lose the subjectivity then it becomes sympathy that's where it is efficacy as a physician to maintain the profession uh, contact next is paraphrasing which is 
a restatement of a text or, or a passage, giving the meaning in a, another form. I will be giving the examples in the coming slides. What about reflecting? It's about emphasizing by talking this back the same crucial point which was told by the patients. So reflecting it back to the patient is called reflection. Listening versus active listening. Listening is hearing uh, grossly what has been said, whereas active listening is a dynamic process that includes both hearing uh, what has been said and simultaneously processing and interpreting the words that are spoken or even not spoken also, to understand the complete message that has been delivered to the receiver. So to put in colloquial terms, if you are married, you're, if you are listening, you are an husband, and if you are if you're a wife, you are actively listening. Okay, then coming on to the uh, open-ended versus closed-ended questions. Open-ended questions require the patient to answer with more or less a uh, simple yes or no, uh, whereas closed-ended Sorry, uh, open-ended questions require the patient to answer more than a simple yes or no question, whereas closed-ended questions generally limits the patient to respond in an yes or no dichotomous uh, way. Whereas leading questions that leads the patient to provide a response that he or she will perceive to be the answer that the interviewer actually wants to perceive. So now the next slides will be more of examples. I want, if uh, people are interested, I want them to just point out what, what are the uh, examples actually point uh, Relevant. So the first example is, I know just how you are feeling. Uh, my grandfather had cancer and it was a shock to all of us. At first he was just overwhelmed and upset. So this was the uh, statement that the doctor has told to the patient when the patient was describing that he has been diagnosed with cancer. What does this mean? What does this mean? Uh, can anyone respond for this? Uh, the statement that uh, Dr. Rakesh read out right now. Uh, what is it uh, depicts or what is it about? If you want to choose from one of these, what would it be? Anyone? Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. It could be a, a, a way of empathizing with the patient, but the next sentence, if you see that, uh, again, the doctor is telling that, I know from some personal experience that finding out about cancer can be overwhelming. How are you feeling? So this is another way of empathizing to the patient. So there are two ways of empathizing to the patient. The second one seems more direct so that the patient might not feel that the doctor is actually trying to, uh, you know, uh, trying to normalize the next one would be, so you have an excru excruciating pain, then what else? So you have an excruciating pain, what does that mean? This is when a patient says to you, I keep having uh, pain all day. So the doctor responds to him saying that you have excru excruciating pain. That means that it's, it's a kind of a reflection where the patient says that he has pain. The doctor is trying to reflect the same point in his words, making the patient understand that he has got the point. Then, uh, how are you feeling today? This is the doctor's query to the patient. Is this, what kind of a question is this? I want you to uh, pick from either is it's an open-ended or a closed-ended question. So it's more of an open-ended question that the person has, how are you feeling today? Rather, if you can see the next sentence, it's more of, how are you feeling well today? That's more of a yes or no question, and so it becomes an low standard where you cannot talk more than an SR no, whereas how are you feeling today? Well, the patient can explain that he is not feeling well because of this, that. So it will be more elaborate manner. You don't, do not miss any doses of your medication, do you? So this is an example for you, for a leading question where you are actually closing on the uh, open so that you get a specific reply from the patient. Next, coming on to how important is a good uh, interview or a communication skill. So it influences your professional relationship with your patient, how strong it is with your patient, helps evoke vital history and thereby effective diagnosis, indicates the patient's trust on your treatment and thereby uh, adherence. It improves willingness to revisit you. So these are the important points why there should be a good communication skill. As we all colloquially know that having a good communication skill with patients forms a trust. So it will improve their satisfaction in treatment, 
and with the notion of sharing private and sensitive de details, especially in terms of mental illness, anxiety always prevails among these patients and providing a comfortable and safe environment by the doctor is very essential. Basically, it helps you form a healthy uh, rapport with the patient. So with this in mind, uh, in the past it has been in 1997, the MCI uh, regulations have actually had a ma mandate to teach communication skills. However, uh, that was also continued uh, by the Vision uh, 2015 document of the MCI, but it was not uniformly followed across the country. So, with this, the MCI always felt that communication skills is always important and they are expected to communicate, that the doctors are expected to communicate appropriately with their patients, the family, the colleagues, as well as the community. So, with another quote, uh, before going into the uh, core uh, uh, discussions, Maya Angelou is a, a uh, well-renowned American poet and a civil uh, rights activist who was uh, who's a, uh, basically a black who had uh, recited a poem for the first time uh, during a uh, presidential uh, 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 signing in, that is uh, Bill Clinton's uh, dream. So she says that, I have learned that people will forget what you have said. They will forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. So that's how important communication skills are, which is not only about what you talk, but the way you talk, and how you, the body language is about. So ways of communication, um, especially when it comes to uh, talking with the patient. So th there have been uh, certain uh, models which have been uh, used in the past. Uh, so, of which, of which the most commonly uh, seen and described is are the friendly and affiliative, this is business-like and dominant kind of communication, patient-centered versus disease or disorder-centered, directive versus sharing uh, consulting type. You see the friendly versus uh, business-like, uh, it's like when you're friendly, it's like the, the patients feel that you're polite and respectful, respectful considerate social and jovial at times with positive, non-verbal gestures and encouraging and empathy. Whereas business-like, it will be more of tension and tone, a lot of anger and disagreements during the uh, discussion of the recommendations. Antagonistic to all the points put forward by the patient and uh, they get a vibe of irritation all the time. So patient-centered will be more of a semi-structured, open-ended uh, question uh, clustered interview and patient is allowed to express and from that expression, the relevant information for the diagnosis is fixed out by active listening and followed by uh, leading and uh, closed-ended questions as and when required. Whereas a disease center will be more of a structured, closed-ended history taking uh, where you use a lot of screeners, schedules and performers. The patient is more of a passive respondent with more or less uh, yes or no kind of uh, or short phrases. And uh, the directive versus sharing is more of, I'm giving some examples for directive versus sharing. So when a person comes to you, uh, usually these are the uh, response that we give as a physician. We say that this is a serious problem, you should have come earlier, have come late. It's more of a directive kind of an expression, whereas in sharing it would be like, what do you think this has, why do you think this has happened? And what made you consult at this point in time? The other example is you're suffering from uh, a particular disease. Whereas you ask the patient, what do you think this is probably because of? What do you think is wrong with you? It is essential to take tablets is more of directive, whereas what have you tried to do to help yourself in the past? Would you like to have a prescription? I recommend meds will help you in this case. This is more of a sharing kind of an experience with the patients. Come and see me after a particular duration of time is more of directive, whereas when you do like to come and see me again and then once the patient gives a particular timeline, you can always say that I would feel that you can come after you say. So that could be more of a sharing kind of a, uh, discussion. So any queries till now, we can take up some... Uh, yeah. Uh, any queries, any inputs uh, till the, uh, regarding the presentation or the material that has been covered till, the, till this point uh, from uh, anyone from the audience? See, till now he has presented the uh, basic things, terminologies, he has explained and everything and he has given examples uh, whenever it is required and uh, to, to tell 
uh, regarding communication skill is it is uh, the uh, point like communication skill is the one thing that uh, that that is in between a good diagnosis and a probable not so good diagnosis because the information you get from the good communication skill is always a uh, uh, asset for a physician i guess uh, most of the most of you people agree regarding this I mentioned about all the uh, nuances of uh, 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 clinical interviews and also he has given an example uh, kindly anyone has any queries or uh, any inputs it is always welcome uh, i think in the last session we had some discussion about the violence against doctors i think one of the way to avoid it is to have a better communication skills i think last time also uh, the team uh, uh, had discussed it that a better communication skill both verbal and non verbal will have some indicators like it would be most of a step will be a precaution step help to avoid the violence against doctors so knowing this would be really useful any clarifications or any points for discussion no further clarification uh, can continue with the further presentation so another quote uh, to go uh, further when you talk 7% of words they are only labels and the listener puts his own interpretation to the speaker's words 38% are paralinguistics the way in which something is said and the bulk of 55% is body language what a speaker looks looks like when he is conversing so with that i would like to you know uh, give a brief outline of the most commonly used uh, model for uh, interviewing a patient which is the patient centered interviewing so it contains around five steps with which you can actually uh, interview a patient so i'll be just giving a gist of it of course this pattern will come only when as and when you uh, practice it with your patients so it's been a practice that you know, for physicians that it's it's always been a close ended kind of an interview where we always have a set of questions to ask for especially in very uh, you know busy schedule or busy opd setting but it's worthwhile trying out the uh, open ended uh, patient centered questioning where even when we started with this perform a kind of a questioning it tend to have taken time in the beginning as and when we uh, used it very frequently while practice it has the time would have come down so patient center could also be of a similar sort so the first step will be of to setting the stage for the interview so as when the patient come walks into your uh, cabin you welcome the patient you can use the name Uh, so that they get more uh, so that's the most uh, you know uh, soothing sound for any person to hear this name from a stranger introduce yourself and identify a specific role but if your name code is already there and your specific is already there on the table or on outside your uh, cabin i don't think in a busy schedule it would be uh, you know recommended for introducing yourself for every patient ensure the patient is ready for your uh, interview and privacy as well then remove the whatever barriers that you have like probably if the door is open you can have a lot of interruptions so try to keep the barriers to minimum i'll be talking about the barriers to communication in the coming sessions ensure that the patient is comfortable and put them at ease both physically as well as with your words the next step will be to elicit the chief complaints as well as setting the agenda task when the patient comes in you set the agenda by indicating them that see we have this is scheduled so this is the time that will be allotting you say we have got about 20 minutes today together so let's see what you want so what is the next question could be what is the reason for your visit and uh, if it's it can be just if it's a new patient then probably you should start with the chief complaints and if not you can see that you can uh, review the blood test or something like that so you talk to them what you are going to do by setting the agenda in the beginning and obtain all the list of all the issues the patient wants to discuss at that particular point in time after you got all the information you can summarize and finalize the agenda and if at all you feel that you will not be able to completely finish it you can still say that you know before we before starting only you can still uh, you can say that you know before we go ahead with the agenda let's get a list of the things that you want to do discuss today the rest can be taken up in the coming uh, visits 
then that's how we negotiate the specifics. There are too many agendas that is put on the uh, items. Step three will be to help the patient uh, to express. So as we already mentioned about open-ended questions, once you have the chief complaints, the next uh, thing is to express, uh, to identify what, what, what are to elaborate the chief complaints. So for example, if that's going to be a headache, you just ask them, okay, tell me something about your headache that you've been having. So once they completely uh, give their uh, overview about their headache, then start, you can, in the meantime, use all your uh, non-focusing open-ended skills like silently listening to the uh, <laughs> By using your uh, non-focusing open-ended skills, by listening silently, active listening, using natural utterances like mm, okay, and something like that, using non-verbal encouragements uh, and also in the meantime to obtain additional data from non-verbal uh, sources like patients' non-verbal cues, characteristics as well as environment that could be uh, patients' relatives, how they are reacting to the uh, patient's complaints. So all these things will make you understand the patient as a whole while you are actually going through to find out the diagnosis. The next step would be to elicit the physical symptoms. You can, uh, the patient is telling that probably I have been having this pain for a long time. So you can use the uh, um, you know, techniques that we have been discussing that uh, about paraphrasing, reflecting. So when you use all these skills, patient will come to know that you are actively listening to them and you are not deviating from any of their uh, worries that they are talking about. And once you try to reflect by telling their holes, so you have been having an excruciating, excruciating new pain, so what else do you have? So if you keep telling all these things, then they will feel more comfortable to talking to you. And that is one of the uh, skills that you have to have. And later, once you got all the information, you can summarize by telling, for example, if the patient has come up with fever, you can say that, okay, first you had fever for these many days, and two days later you started having uh, knee pain, then you began to hurt, and yesterday you had begun to limp, started limping. So this is the phrase, uh, so, uh, this is the whole issue that you have got. You are trying to check with the patient whether you have understood it right. So all these things will put the patient under ease that the doctor, yeah, he's been listening to me and uh, he has understood it right. If you want further information, then you can just say that, you know, say more about that. Say more about something. What else is happening? So uh, the next point would be to elicit personal psychosocial context. This is especially for, you know, psychiatrists or the mental health patients. So you can still go ahead and ask how this has affected your family, affected you in terms of uh, your functioning, what do you think might be going on. So these are the other questions that put them in and uh, you can it, uh, building your app. And of course this again is more of for the uh, mental health professional point of view where you elicit emotions. So not, when I say mental health point of view, it doesn't mean it's only for them. I'm just putting if it's going to be a very you know, uh, busy setup, probably these questions could be avoided. So you can ask them how are you doing uh, with this problem, does it make you feel better, you know? And the other questions would be, you know, you have been having uh, disabled by this knee pain. I feel that you are feeling, I understand that you are feeling uh, uh, disturbed because of this way. So you can respect them telling that this has been a difficult time for you, show a lot of courage. So all these statements will put them at ease and they think that, you know, the doctor is becoming understanding and he's, also there is a, a kind of a respect, self and mutual respect that's being formed. And later you say that, you know, so I shall help you on this regard and we shall uh, go ahead and give you the recommendations. So this is for each symptom that you would try to do. And if you want, they have a few more complaints or concerns, you repeat the same cycle again for each. So the last one, once you get all the history, then you have to be more of using, as I told you previously, uh, patient-centered part is over. Sometimes you need to quickly wrap up, so you need to suddenly shift gears and put to, and go into the doctor-centered phase where you can just ask quick questions, close-centered questions like a brief summary and checking the accuracy of information, telling them that I'll be asking you a few questions, uh, tuck, 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 so you can just give me a, in a yes or no question or something. So, for example, uh, if you ask, want to ask something about vomiting, you have uh, the vomit yellow in color, or, uh, or did you have any uh, projectile vomiting? 
those kind of questions if you, if you have not covered in the open ended uh, part you can just ask quickly uh, all the close ended questions so that uh, the whole you know uh, interview is complete so next this is the most important uh, aspect so what exactly is being the friction between the patient and the uh, doctor why is sometimes the interview doesn't work one thing you have to understand is that you know there's no ideal uh, way of interview each person uh, finds his own way of uh, communication uh, or interviewing style but there are few factors which actually will influence your rapport building when you are interviewing the patient that will be the respective personalities that each patient uh, the patient or the doctor will share so when those two comes in contact of course there will be certain uh, you know uh, life experiences and cultural values that each of them have so that might be a barrier uh, you know when especially when there are a doctor from a different culture or language background maybe tends to uh, interview a patient from the other side that could be certain inhibitions or hesitancies for the patient to open up so it's the skill that a physician should have to put the patient as ease at ease so that he gives us so when i say cultural competence of the physician it's the flexibility that the physician will have uh, should have to interview patients across different cultures so if we have uh, certain surveys that have shown that uh, the patient's uh, characteristics and doctor's characteristics which have been favorable for patient satisfaction uh, for example female uh, patients older patients and language compatible doctors uh, the patients have uh, told that they have felt more comfortable with the doctors and uh, patients who have been electively admitted i felt that uh, they have been more comfortable with the care system lower hospital bills good hygiene in the hospital these are the other social uh, parameters that have felt that the rapport building was good or the patient satisfaction was good in these aspects whereas the patients felt that when it was an older physician uh, and it was especially when it comes to uh, specific specialties obstetrician and surgeons uh, seem to have more uh, built more rapport than the their counterparts uh, the debate is that since in uh, in gynecology since it's for uh, childbirth eventually the uh, you know the parents feel happier so the uh, satisfaction is more whereas for surgeons it seems that since patients feel that whenever they have to be operated it seems that it's it's, it's a huge problem so when they get operated successfully they think that the doctor has done a good job and so they feel more you know uh, cordial with the doctors and uh, and in, in addition to all these things any physician was being very concerning actively listening to them carefully listening listening to what they say explaining difficult concepts in a minimal medical jargons in simple language spending more time with the patients these are the other parameters which have put the put the patients at ease and uh, they have a complaint of uh, i mean uh, told of good satisfaction however uh, to warn you is that uh, the disease outcome is not directly proportional to the pa patient satisfaction but this statement however is has been having variable uh, you know research uh, outcomes so how to improve a patient satisfaction from at this point in time just in case so communicating preoperatively in Uh, for uh, surgery, calling few in patient, uh, few are in patient consultation during a prolonged hospital stay, exhibiting uh, provider empathy in a clinical setting, and explaining a medical condition and treatment, and ensuring reliable follow-up communication, targeted intervention such as, such as ed education about medical problem and the illness, and real-time feedback to improve patient satisfaction. So, for a person uh, who is listening, it's been put that there are levels where a person actually listens to the one would be a completely uh, non listener who doesn't listen to anything one could be a marginal listener the other one could be an evaluative listener who's uh, just picking up the crucial points that is required the other one the last one would be the active listener which would be the ideal concept that we are talking about so to improve the listening skills when you start talking to a patient over the table better not to be preoccupied you should have a mindset that once you're a doctor you're being demands uh, the and something from you which is i think a part of your profession so keeping everything aside and start being uh, you know at at the present not being preoccupied with whatever is behind being open minded and non defensive say if you don't know any anything be open to them being sometimes defensive will also put you that okay if i'm not clear of what they are asking sometimes we tend to get irritable and be more start becoming 
noising interruptions, this is more important. Sometimes when we are doing an interview, we have your you know, hospital assistant or some other patient coming in. It's very important, as I told you, to keep your cabin very you know, uh, barrier uh, uh, effective so, so that nobody comes in. And sometimes you know, uh, it is very difficult to avoid those. You might have your superiors coming in. So that time it's very important to know. Tell the patient, uh, you know, uh, politely that can you just wait for a few minutes and uh, speak to this person for, uh, for this many, much time and just get back to you. Is that okay? So these are all the few uh, nuances that you have to understand when you are doing this uh, interview. So effective listening is more of hearing it clearly, interpreting whenever it's necessary and understanding the message and relating to what you want to do is, that is to come into a diagnosis. And whenever you are not clear, Open to ask questions to the patient so that you understand it. Barriers to effective communication could be some unwillingness, unwillingness from the communicator, like patient might be unwilling to say something in a different manner. So sometimes when you feel that I don't understand, can you put it in different words? The patient might have difficulty in saying differently. That could be one barrier. The reason for that could be probably a lower uh, uh, socioeconomic or education background. Unwillingness to relate to others differently. Sometimes they will also have certain issues that if, if a person is not able to understand them properly, find it difficult to see that, okay, this person is not able to understand this point. Maybe I, either I have to tell it in a different way or to stop explaining it. Unwillingness to learn new approaches. This could be either with the patient or even sometimes for ourselves with the colleagues also. Uh, lack of self-confidence, lack of self-awareness that sometimes going back and having feedbacks, about, asking about feedbacks from your colleagues, how has been my interview, taking videos or recording uh, how you are, you know, uh, interviewing a particular patient, all these things are very important uh, in this aspect. Lack of enthusiasm, some, sometimes when you completely become drained off, especially in the emergency, or sometimes you, you tend to feel, you know, exhausted. So those are the barriers for sometimes for effective communication. Of those are all going to be there. And from the receiver's end, could be, uh, you know, the personal values, as I already told, they can have their own set cultural uh, uh, values and beliefs. So anything that has been taught beyond that, they might feel that this doctor is probably might not understand me at all. So probably he might stop telling few things to us. So being very uh, aware of all those things and accepting that each, you know, uh, uh, community or uh, culture values different and it's important for that patient is very, you know, very, very significant for the physician to follow. Selective perception similar, like when they feel that, you know, uh, they keep, uh, they get fixed or become rigid to a particular uh, concept, they have difficulty in getting out of it. That again can be explained because of uh, poor, you know, uh, intelligence or uh, educational background. Of course, knowledge of the subject and the other two I've already What are the external barriers that we have? The venue itself could be an external barrier. We've been talking about this uh, emergency setup even in the clinic, how difficult it can be in ma managing patients. Uh, ICU setup, whereas in the IP it could be a better when compared to the OP and the emergency. Noise levels at the venue, it's very important to uh, you know, keep uh, know, uh, all the set place that basically demand, uh, depends upon the, uh, the administrative level, uh, how you, you know, base your interview group, uh, how uh, isolated it is from the waiting hall, all these things. Also. This is one thing that was interesting, temperature and time, where the climate could, uh, you know, waiting time if it's going to increase and it's the temperature or, or the climate is going to be really bad, patients can become restless and it could also influence the way they respond to you. And uh, coming to the last few slides, uh, what are the essentials of a communication? So as I already told, your mindset before starting the interview matters a lot. We have uh, been trained uh, or told that, you know, as doctors, care is the most important and uh, before prescription, the whole uh, process itself involves care. So it's always important to keep the mindset as calm as possible. Always think ahead about what you're going to say. So it, this will come only when you have seen a lot of patients and you know what you're going to say. Simple words and phrases that will be mostly understood by a lay person. So don't use medical jargons. You have to be ready enough to, you know, uh, practice yourself in how we are going to, uh, you know, uh, simplify the medical jargons into small phrases which a lay person can understand. 
sometimes that can uh, indirectly influence the way the patient understands it, and it might lead to violence again. Increase your knowledge on the subject if you feel that you are not you know, uh, confident enough, and sometimes not being confident itself might put you in a place where you are very, you know, becoming, uh, you know, irritable and might not be able to answer it in the right way. You might feel the anger on yourself, which you will displace on uh, patient or their relatives. What do you speak? Speak clearly and audibly. Start speaking slowly and, you know, if the patient doesn't understand, it will eventually go back and waste your time. They might ask you again that you don't understand. But go back and explain it again and again, which will eventually let you Check twice whether the listener, uh, whether they have understood you accurately or not. You don't have to even check twice. If they have understood, you can ask them to even, you know, uh, could you tell me what you have understood? So they can just tell what they have understood uh, so that you think that, okay, or both of them. Other do's will be in case of interruption, as I already told. If somebody, you know, uh, comes in between and you have to take a break, once you receive the interview, it's, good, it's, an habit, it's a good habit that you just say that, okay, Till now, uh, sorry that I have uh, interrupted in between. Till now, what I have understood is this thing. Then we go ahead. So, little re recap would help. And always pay an undivided attention uh, to the speaker. Don't you know, try to uh, you know, uh, keep looking here and there, which might annoy the patient also. Uh, and sometimes, if you have difficulty in following it, maybe take notes of important points as well as we do in the open setup. Sometimes you write the chief, you know, chief complaints. That could be uh, important as well. So if you have failed to grasp, definitely go back and ask for the clarifications. So what are the don'ts? Uh, do not instantly react and mutter something in anger. Just wait for a second, try to analyze what the patient has told, then try to keep a, you know, calm and, uh, I know it's difficult in the but it's important to practice at any point in time when you see patients. Do not, as I told, do not use technical terms. Make sure that you are able to break up into a s smaller and simple uh, name and uh, terms to use. Try not to speak fast or slow, which could be uh, counterproductive. Make sure your voice is distinct. Do not speak, try to speak in an inaudible uh, surrounding. It's again going to be a counterproductive one. Do not assume that whatever you have told the patient has understood and uh, they are continuing to ask the same thing again and again. But you also have to, as I told you before, change your approach in making them understand. So, paraphrasing at this point in time is very important. Try to put it in different words. These are the skills I think as a clinician you need to work, work on. So, while listening, as I told you, do not glance here and there. That might distract the speaker as well and what he wanted to say might not be done uh, at all. Do not interrupt the speaker. You have to be clear enough when to interrupt. And then you give your response. Do not try to jump to the conclusion. For example, few uh, doctors will also feel that once a patient comes up with a complaint, you, you, you jump to a conclusion saying, okay, this is going to be the diagnosis or something. Try to make sure that they complete what they have, uh, want to say. And maybe from there, you can also have leading questions back to understand the so, uh, to summarize, interviewing is an art and there is no perfect interviewing. Striving for per perfection by a constant practice. Each patient will provide better results every time. It's a vital tool for, tool for any physician, just like uh, a surgeon's life. Convert yourself or the patient if not used skillfully. It's important to understand the difference between empathy and sympathy. Uh, so, you don't have to feel that, you know, Understanding addiction is not our uh, part, it's only prescribing medications, not that way. Empathize, but sympathy is not required. Listening is as important as responding. And patient-centered seems time-consuming, but practice, just like how, how you spend time in the convention is you take the previous, uh, in, while you start uh, practicing, this, type, this too will come down and be more effective uh, compared to the conventional history taking pattern. Maintain calmness. And understand what's in your control, and try to you know make uh, take necessary precautions. So, to end with, the profession demands care, and the word means a lot more before penning down the prescription. So, it starts from what you speak, and till the point you put a full stop to your prescription. Thank you.